I'll second it. Are you in favor? <laughs> I'm in favor. Aye. <laughs> so minutes are approved. And so we'll go to old business. And the first is we went to review the revised checklist and timeline. And Laura, you have yours? Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm up it here. Up. Okay. Okay. And we just introduced ourselves. I introduced you. Yep. She said you were. <laughs> she said you were Zach Walker in case if anybody yeah. might complain. <laughs> oh That's my right. goodness. <laughs> I had some um, changes to this to the list. Is that what we're looking at? To the checklist and the timeline? Yep. So well, actually, we would like to talk to you about the timeline. OK. Um, first thing is, is we want to say after we're done with these two, the the holiday and the the article one, uh -huh. being out article one. Um, the next thing we want to bring is an ethics policy, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we would like to take the rest of the chapters and work with the labor unions. <clears throat> on the changes and everything before we bring them to you. We feel like that would probably be a better process um, and and we'll take less time when we get to these meetings, um, but we'll mean it will take more time before we have something to present to you. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you guys are OK with that, I, I think I think that would be a better process. I don't I think they probably think that would be a better process too. But that would give us an opportunity to hash out anything, um, any type of labor issues and concerns that are better suited to talk about between, you know, staff and, and labor versus in this kind of forum. Well, I like that idea a lot. I do too. Um, I think it would speed up the process some. Um, and I think that's kind of what it used to be. I know we're all in the used to be was before some, some of us were on, but yeah. I don't know what it used to be. It's I, know, I, I, yeah, I think it, I it's been a long it. time since they, the policies have been completely looked at. Oh, yeah. Years. Yeah. 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 And the so, last one we made yeah. was in yeah. 19, 18 for 19. So. So uh, do we need to make a motion that we accept that? idea and change the time it's a policy. I mean I, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea for for you all to take some formal action supporting supporting our recommendation that okay. we're, we're gonna over rewrite the entire you know draft an entire rewrite and then work with the labor coalition and then present those back to you all okay so that would ideally that'd be great I think to have some formal acknowledgement that that's what we're gonna do okay yeah because it would it would drastically change the yes and yes. I don't yeah yeah because yeah. because I was even, I was even yeah, I know it, it's the, yeah you know, but that's yeah okay okay Madam Chair uh, so yeah that's that's kind of the thought I had earlier on was meeting with the bargaining units right. trying to work it out I would plead that you would you guys in your motion would allow a seat for a retiree representative. In that on that committee um, on the committee <laughs> on the, that meets with them to work on them i don't think the labor coalition i mean that's a formal group so i don't that would have require a modification of that well, they could allow it if they wanted to allow I, it i think the labor coalition is established by the city manager am i right they could allow me to sit in on that i think what we could do is, is work with you in a different capacity or whoever the loggers representative needs to meet. That might be an appropriate way to do that versus working with active employees on the personnel manual. My concern is looking at all of it before you sit down to talk and have an ability to put input. I, I think there's an opportunity for a loggers representative to have input, but it, I don't know if it's necessarily when we meet with the labor coalition. The I labor coalition would, would be able to appoint whoever they wanted on that coalition. That's not established by any rule. The city manager doesn't have anything to do with the labor yeah. coalition. They would be able to see who they wanted in there. Would that be right? I don't know. Or would you have an objection to that? 
Well, I mean, there's only certain components in the personnel manual that um, relate to retirees. Mm -hmm. So, if I may, I have. I'm not bragging. Just my experience in life, I have a pretty in-depth knowledge of this and the history of this. So I think at some place I could be of assistance, either through the labor coalition, or through you wanting to let me be in on the formative discussions. So is it you or someone or a representative from the retirees? So you just said you. So is it you or well, is it I, a representative I got, from I, the retirees? I have a little idea that I might be the appointed, but I may not. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Um, is the labor are the labor coalition meetings public meetings? No, no. no private meetings. Okay. Um, so with the I'm I'm just trying to understand. So from the labor guys over there, can you invite someone into the coalition for doing this type of work? Is that you guys control that? Correct. Okay. So you can control that piece of it if you want to get the retiree involved, which. Correct. I think is not going to hurt because I think the retirees have a position in a lot of you know these things and have experience. So I would just say I would let the labor coalition decide whoever you want to have at your meetings is who you have. That would be my suggestion. So if that's the case, then that doesn't need to be included in your recommendation if the labor coalition decides that. Correct. So correct. Well, I, I go back to what Jennifer said. There's very few pieces. Mm -hmm that really are pertinent to the retirees. So I I see that kind of as a but I see I see Butch's point in that he's been through these inside and out, upside and down for decades, I'm sure. You know well, I get that too. Um and I think we should just let labor choose. We need to put the monkey on their back. <laughs> they want to do it. I mean, we can't stop them. I mean, we can't. We can say labor coalition. I can't stop them from inviting people to their meeting, right? Right. So I go ahead. I will make a motion. Let's see. Okay, are we ready for a motion? Oh, I'm not sure what you said. Did you make a motion? Um, no, no, not yet. No. What the way I see it is, is as it, Adam indicated, if we just use we stick with the phrase labor coalition and the mm -hmm. put you know and all that then whoever the labor coalition is is who the labor coalition is it's not us to determine and even if we don't maybe want some retiree in there we can't choose that they get to choose that so i say just go with what we said and they'll make up their mind who they want yeah and then you know yeah and it's also up to us how that works too. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then because I don't think it's, I don't think necessarily that we can make a motion saying what should or shouldn't happen in the labor coalition meeting, not being our purview. But I think it would really be helpful to have somebody from the retiree group, whether it be Henry, and he's he obviously qualified, you know, to be a part of that. And I, yeah, I again, agree with whether that. that's a formal recommendation or not. That's what I would do. I would invite, you know, as many people that could be helpful. And so. OK, so do we have a motion then? Um, I would make a motion to. What word you said? <laughs> so we staff will uh, generate an updated draft of the entire personnel manual. OK, then work with the labor coalition on you know navigating those changes and then bring the entire manual back to this this body for uh you know consideration and a recommendation and that probably is going to take many many months to do oh yeah i i, so, I would say probably a couple of years at this point it, I mean, it, we're, we're so it, would far be, it would be a big undertaking um but yeah, yeah. i think that mm -hmm. that seems like the proper process so i make a motion for mm -hmm. those words okay okay which jennifer okay. i know is Right. Yep. <laughs> I, I go with second. Okay. So we're all in favor of that then. Yay. <laughs> and then the only other thing I had on the checklist was just like looking at how like we're getting close on this, but we're you know, we have our if we have our next meeting is public hearing so that everybody can read the changes we've made. Then that pushes um 
pushes us out to May 13th to make the recommendation and then uh, review and action by the council will be the first meeting they would have would be June 6th. So that's the only changes I had. I didn't go into what's next. But I think that's what we need to find more be, so not necessarily anything new or different. Okay. Their meetings just get strong out because they've got an extra Friday or excuse me, probably an extra Friday too. They have an extra Monday in May, so we would push it to June 6th, but The June 6th for what? Um, so if I look at, so we have to post everything. Okay, so our, ne our next meeting, unless we want to change our meeting date, is May 13th, right? We're in April. That's right. right. Yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're already in May. I know. I know. So May 13th is our next meeting when we will make a recommendation on these two policies once they've had the 10 day put out time again. We've, We've already, already done, done that. that. Well, I mean, these Article One slash Two. There's no way we could do this without putting it back out to them. This has changed. I mean, that changed from the time you guys gave it to them to us, which again, not a problem. But this is massive changes. I, I, we should not make a recommendation until it goes out for 10 day review back out to them, please. It is what I mean. You you have to agree. This is way more changes than. We, I, I, gonna twice we've now. done it twice now, and everything that we talked Include. about is in here, and the changes we went back and put in here. So, are you saying there will be more changes? Well, yeah. I mean, I have other thoughts on here. I mean, we've got misspelled no. words. We got some things we need to look at. Most of it did. I mean, we did great. I got through it quickly, but I still do have questions. But, um, and I don't know. Um, an employee would have to confirm or this, or they want to deny confirming it or whatever. But did you guys actually receive the? This updated in your email. Okay, so in your email. Well, it's posted publicly. Right for but, 10 but, days, but we've, we've always done it in the past where the employees. I mean, and this was this went out with the employees the first time, right? I, I, I just, I'm looking to them because I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so you would have had to go find it out online. Okay. Which is which is fine, but we have not had a we have not had a notice of public hearing sent to them to see the documents for as many changes as we've had our meetings are all public but they're not public hearings so we can't make a motion today on something I'm a little confused because I think we, we've done we followed all the I mean we've posted it as public hearing we don't typically send out to all the employees, all the changes. It's just, well, we've done all, all the requirements. So, well, I mean, I, I I mean, mean, ultimately, it's up to you guys in the end if you are ready to move forward or not. But I mean, we've been posting these, we've been publicizing these as public hearings um, to, you know. The agenda, what is, how does the agenda read them? It just says personnel board agenda. So it, it's, it's not, it does not state it's a public hearing. I mean, public hearings are different than just our regular meetings. I mean, we might do other business, but this has to be as a public hearing. So the. So basically, so basically, let me walk through what I have and then. So. This there's no way I could vote to make a recommendation on this without us finishing this up because there, there are more questions that I have then getting it finalized out to them which would, we'd have to have it all out by April 29th to give 10 working days. Um, then we would meet on May 13th, unless we move our meeting up, we could do that if we have the ability to get this changes quick and out to them as, if we wanna move our meeting up. If we meet on May 13th, which is a Friday, it's not gonna make the agenda for the Monday meeting. And then the meeting after that is a study session. The meeting after that is a five day Fifth Monday, so they don't have a meeting. They don't have their next meeting until June 6th, which would be the time we could then say, well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So June 6th would be the first reading and then. They can go from there. If they want to put it on a, as a resolution and non ordinance action item and. Vote on it with one vote instead of, you know, I don't, 
don't think it's an ordinance. This isn't an ordinance, yeah. so it just doesn't have it's to a resolution. Yeah. yeah. So that's the timing that I'm looking at, unless we <laughs> change the time of our meeting in May to move it up. So that we could get it on the 13th, 14th, 16th agenda. Has anybody seen the dates wrong that I have? It might be helpful once this is deliberated for the board to clarify to us what the expectations are because we are meeting the requirements that are set forth here. So if there's additional requirements that this board as a as a group wants us to do, then that would be helpful for us to know that. Yeah, I, I think that um, I mean, when you know, when we still have questions that are significant. I mean, there's. I, I guess I'm asking. Like you you mentioned them. the posting information. We follow oh. those requirements. So if this board, as a group, wants to decide and ask us as a staff to do something, I see with the posting. Okay. In, adi in addition to what's required, it would be helpful to know that, and for you to give us that direction. So there'd be a. Notice that goes out that says public hearing these articles and then an email. I mean, I know you have to like you still have to physically post things, you know, send out an email. This is the public hearing on these two section changes or whatever. Attach it to them so they have it right there and they can read it. Yeah. Ten days in advance. Then they don't have to go looking. So do you have to do that every time you make a change? Is that what you're proposing? Because we did we did do that. We've already we've already done that. I know, and and that I that was a situation where that was a law change that we had very little you know few word changes and i probably should at that point have said no this is not the precedent so the way we do this but when you have this kind of change i mean when you're adding a law that you just have to add and it's basic knowledge fine but this is huge changes from the time it first went out and i want somebody to see this after we get these questions answered so that they have one last time to look at it and this has not gone through Labor Coalition, right? Has this gone through the Labor Coalition? Well, I, I don't know how that we, We've discussed independently with our members, you know, okay. as these things go on, there's still questions of the last meeting. I don't know the procedure about the Labor Coalition for, during, after, whatever. I don't, I believe right now there's not a, I think that's what they're asking to make in the future. I don't think there is a, procedure now that they've come to the labor coalition no okay that's okay. not what okay. i'm suggesting no. what i'm if i understand this we posted this meeting properly as required this meeting and, and then and, the and it was public yeah and the materials for the meeting were posted okay what i heard you say was that there needs to be an extra step so if there needs to be a change in the requirements for us then yeah. as a group you all we would appreciate you all you know, taking some kind of direction on that so we understand what the expectations are. We met the requirements. So if there's a change in those expectations, we need to know that. Okay, so you met the requirements of a personnel board agenda. You did not meet the requirements of a public hearing. There's not been anything that has come out to say this is a public hearing. If they get, if they employees get emails all the time saying it's a, it's a meeting, personnel board agenda meeting, that's one thing. But when they know that it's a public hearing, it's a public hearing. And I asked for, and I'm afraid I didn't bring it, I asked for the last time we had a public hearing, which was back in uh, uh, 2018 regarding the July 1st hiring, 2019 and after you have to pay for your own health care insurance when you retire. That was the last time we've had a public hearing. And I asked Becky for a copy of it, and of course I didn't bring it, but it was, I think it said public hearing on it. So you just tell them it's a public hearing. Here's the documents. We're meeting in 10 days. Boom, done. It just says hearing. So that's probably one in this article one. It just says that there'll be a hearing. Um, in article one about a hearing. Yes, what you're talking about, article one, item B, amendment and adoption. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. I was focused so much on the whistleblower stuff and everything. I didn't go back. So yeah. that's probably where then awesome. we need to clarify that.
Says, at the time of hearing, interest in McCoy's. Yeah, so, so it says right here, yeah, it says, at the time of hearing, interested employees and the reps can come in and talk, basically. Mm -hmm. Which we've allowed. It's just, it's right. It's, but you have it to call it a public hearing. Public hearing. I mean, but it's all posted. Everyone can come. Anyone can come right. and talk. Right. So, if, like if I know, like the city council's meeting every Monday, you know, all the time or whatever, but I know they've got a big change to something coming on. I, it, there's, the, the, for instance, it says on the agenda for a city council meeting, public hearing, when they have to have a public hearing, which is in, you know, if you read the agenda, you have to come and say yay or nay to whatever you want to do. So we can have a personnel board agenda, meet, meeting agenda is just a meeting to discuss things over and over. But public hearing is when we make recommendations, right? I mean, I've never done it, We except that one time we did with the law change, which I should not have let that go because that's not the way we our precedent had been. Well, I think that's where we maybe need to clarify because yes. it's not so I think clear here when we bring forward and and an, an item to you is the expectation we're going to discuss it, but we're not going to move it forward. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. Or do we yes. need to yes. every time we bring a, a public change? Hearing. Do we have to notice it up as a public hearing? Absolutely. Every time we bring a change, I guess that's where we're kind of maybe trying to understand a little bit because we we know you need to discuss it but mm -hmm. there's also times where it could be well, we can make a recommendation on this we don't have to now mm -hmm. if it's a simple change that type of thing so i guess i'm i'm trying to maybe understand a little bit better that we can clear 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 up this paragraph i think to be honest with you well and, and i think that like say let say uh, disregarding the snow that the day that we had or whatever the last time we had a meeting if it had been like oh we just have a couple scrivener changes and you know, can we just work on one of those two sentences? I would say yes. Now put it up for this meeting today, and call it a public hearing, and put down, you know, you know, motion action items. You know, when you want us to make a motion on something, the agenda should say the public hearing should say motion. You know, I mean, this I don't mind the, I don't mind it being short and sweet like this, but like it says, we're doing the final revision review of Article Two. Flash more. We're not we're not making a motion today to to do that. And I don't want to make this complicated. I just want us to ensure that if we have an ex like we had a lot a lot a lot a lot of changes on this, and now I've got a few more questions. So and we I, have I not feel like it, it changes every time. Every time we come here, the expect change the expectation changes. And so I I'm gonna okay, just okay. say I, I I'm confused. So I maybe you can clear up the confusion. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I don't understand what the difference is between this public meeting and a public hearing. Okay, I guess. and that's time. my one that's more time. my one more time. What's the difference? Because we put out there that we're, that change that the changes these are going to be discussed. The personnel board will vote on. You know, will will decide. I mean, when you're ready to make a recommendation. So it is public. People can come. In fact, pe employees email and employees might ask questions. And employees are public here, is not right? the question. No. The word yeah. public is not the question. Obviously, it's all public. We have to meet in public. That's not the part of the question. I'm, I don't. I don't I'm, not, I'm not calling why it's confusing. I mean, if we have a meeting and say we're just say we're just discussing this one item, we have a meeting. We're like, OK, change that spelling and move that word around. And please, next time, bring that up as a public hearing item. Done. If we look at this and go, oh gosh, there's a lot of changes to this, and it may take another time. Or so, you can put it out as a public hearing every time, and then we can we can say yay or nay, but it has to come out 10 days with the changes. And I, I'm sorry that I know that posting it on the, on the board up at City Hall is a thing. Fine, continue to do that. It's, it's very old school, but that's okay. Some people are still old school with that. But please make it easy for the employees to find the changes. Don't let them go out to that. Sorry, that website. I know because I look at it weekly. It's a mess to try to find things out there. I don't see why it's hard to just attach the two things that we would have motion items on it and send it to them in 10 days. And then we and then if we get to the meeting, we say, oh gosh, that's too many changes. We're going to, we're not going to make a motion today. We want to treat, it, treat them all as public hearings. They're public hearing and a meeting or two different days. So, so I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm picking up what you're saying now. Um, 
So there needs, if the intent is for us to seek a recommendation from you for a change on the agenda, the way we have it is old business revisions, final, you know, re yeah. final review, final revision review of Article Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, our our expectation and our intent there was okay. We've met with you guys how many times? Three times on this. These are the final. This this takes all your feedback. You you all got this. I don't know what day you did. Um, if this is you know if this captures all the discussions up to this point, the three preceding meetings. Here you go. Then we're going to move that forward. What I hear you saying is you would rather have almost a hearing section on the agenda that says, you know, adoption of of article two, article two revisions or whatever. Is mm -hmm. that am I am yeah. I understanding that correctly? Yeah. yeah, just I mean, just like just like council does, you know, and, well, and public have, hearings different than a hearing. So, I mean, public hearings are you notice it in the paper. We don't have to do that. That's typically for land use. So this is a hearing. Well, you have we public can, hearings on the agenda we can for put Monday. It, we can put that. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And those are yeah. noticed in the paper. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you want public to... hearing, I think hearing and public hearing, those are very two different things uh, that are important. Public hearing and a hearing are, are different and it's important to distinguish the two. So what I hear you saying is we need to put something on the agenda to explicitly say this is a hearing. Uh, yeah. To, Title uh, set to adopt personnel board this <laughs> article. Is that is that mm -hmm. is that it? Okay, so that that is different. That De definitely, um, you know, I don't know how it was done in 2018, um, but if that's the expectation, and then you know, other than then going further than what is required to post it, you know, again, those are things that we would need that that as a board, you all to make give us that direction. I think. And this is only going to happen on this one thing. Because we've now made a motion that you're going to take everything to them and come back. Correct. Back. Correct. So we're talking but, about one thing. Yeah, but I would like to avoid any potential future issues and discussions like this. So I'm always up for that. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I understood it. We were having an overview and they bring back and work on it. And then when you guys said kind of got to where you thought it was prepared for a vote, then that the whole change would be published for 10 days before we come here. And I think that that says that, <clears throat> that this, this document here that's before you today, unless it was already done, should have had 10 day posting at all work location of boards. Yeah. And then it, then it would be right. It did. Well, it did. I understand yeah. Article Five was was right, but with only one request was for how much it would cost. Mm -hmm. And then I see where Article Five has got a different interpretation, which I don't know if the interpretation would affect. But I, I agree with bringing the cost back and voting for Article Five because it had been posted. My understanding, mm -hmm. and you're saying this was posted for ten days mm -hmm. at all boards, at all fire station boards too. Because we used to we used to see postings never come to our fire station board. <laughs> I think I'm actually lost to what we're even talking about because I didn't Okay, see. okay. Let me let me let me please try to just kind of wrap okay, this because we've already spent 30 minutes on this. Okay. No. Okay. So we that, have made substantial changes to this. I still have substantial questions. Not like a lot of questions, but substantial questions to this. So I would not be in favor. I in fact I would not make a motion or be in favor of approving this today regardless of whether it's been posted or how many times or all of that because it is so different than the document we got a few days ago i suggest what we do is we what 10 is days different? from now we have a meeting with the record what sorry. is different i don't say that again different what's different? what's different okay so the stuff they got had an at will thing that was taken out i have these changes on the front this change on the second this on the third these are all the changes that we spent. I spent hours going through and I talked about two two months ago, right? That's a lot of changes. OK, so now I have fewer changes because you guys did a great job on most of it. 
but there are things that I still have questions on that could change things. So I'm asking that we go through this meeting, figure out what these last things are, and then say in, if you want to make it 10 days from Monday, I don't care if we can reschedule a meeting to have a meeting, put it out in an email to all employees and on whatever board you have to. I don't know about boards, wherever you have to put it on boards, fine. And you attach the two things, the Juneteenth and this, to that so they can open it up, they can read it. At the top of the agenda, it says public meeting of public hearing of personnel no, board public hearing, hearing. Public hearing. It's a it's a public hearing. I mean, I'm going back and, and who the, can't come? There's not there's nothing on any personnel board that ever says public. It says hearing, but not public. Okay, okay you can take the public off, but all of our meetings have to be public because we're subject to sunshine law. So right. take the word public off. I'm I'm done. Fine. I won't I will not argue that piece then. Fine. Call it a hearing. Ten day hearing in ten days. Whatever it is, put the two items on there. We can come back. We can vote on it. And then going forward, we won't have any meetings for months because you guys are going to be going and doing all of that. Is any of that confusing, hard, or am I over asking for something to be done? I think I understand what you're asking. Thank you. But it sounds like there's an additional expectation in addition to posting it as required in the in the personnel manual. There's an additional expectation to distribute. The, um, you send the agenda out. I mean, it's just poop, yeah, poop. That's where I'm saying. Yep, there. yep, that and piece. That, yep. I mean, again, we've the, the requirements were fulfilled. So if the expectation is different, then I, for one, I want to make clear that the requirements were fulfilled, but the expectation is a little different, and that's fine. It's good to no, know. That. And I agree. The Re right. requirements so were fulfilled. That's, that's fine to, to know that. But again, as a group, we, I would appreciate it if you take that action and give us that direction as, as you know, as a body. You know, that would be helpful for us. Okay. okay. Just so like I would make like, a motion. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I would make a motion that this is a this is a one time thing, but it's a going forward. You know, potentially in months after we get done with the other thing. But um, I would make a motion that. When we are not, I'm trying to figure out how to say that when we are substantially close enough, you know, we feel like we're substantially close enough to make a recommendation on an item, then there's a 10 day notice given that says hearing at the top of it to discuss these two items, all of that agenda, you know, hearing notice and minutes are emailed to all the employees and all the retirees. Now, I don't know if that's additional or not. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Whatever, however it gets to re retirees. But I don't want to get into that. I want to know that it goes to employees. I think it goes to retirees too. No, I mean, no, we okay. have a distribution list for active employees. Okay, so. okay. That's, that's fine. Then at, at the, the meeting scheduled 10 day following, then that's when we'll, there'll be on, there'll be, a, it'll be hearing, Motion to recommend policy one, two, mm -hmm. ten, whatever it is. I mean, and this is only this one time. And if we can move our meeting up to ten days from Monday, so we can get more time here, we could gain back a Monday. We get it on the agenda earlier to not drag this into June. But that depends on whether you guys can make. I can make it work. So that was the motion, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. We have a motion. So, uh, motion on the table. Sorry. <laughs> Would you mind reading that back? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that motion when the is. personnel board is making a recommendation on an item, they request a 10 day posting and email to employees with agenda that states it is a hearing. And the hearing, the agenda will, will specifically have a hearing section. Section. It says motion to whatever recommend re yeah. yeah recommend whatever policy or whatever item to recommend said item yep i'll say said item okay and then attached to that email will be the two said items right yep 
Okay. I disagree with this. This is too complicated. I agree with the gentleman over here. We don't even know what we're talking about. And I, and I think the city has met the requirements. We've had, we've been working on this for almost a year, maybe nine months, and we should move a lot quicker. When we started this, I said, if we're going to get involved in personnel rules, and I was totally against it, I think I relayed that to somebody, Teresa maybe, we should not even be involved in this. That I said, okay, give us the new, the new best practices, personnel rules, and let us do the appropriate contacts with the employees, the retirees, and unions, and let's get it. Let's get it accomplished. I mean, I mean, we're going to be a year on this, and I don't, I don't even see where it's going to end. So I can't second it because I don't agree with any of it. It's just government gobbledygook that makes no sense to me. And again, he and I are totally agreement. I don't even know what we're talking about. You know, hearing and the public hearing, and a meeting and a so forth and so on. It just makes no sense. Now I picked up from from listening to what she's saying. And I think what I'm gathering out of what she's saying is now that I somewhat and after I've seen her flipping pages, I do remember seeing that it was handed out to a few people. I don't know that everybody's seen it. But you, like you said, they made so many revisions. I think the last copy, nobody really knows what is on that last final copy that they're proposing that this is what you move forward with. Yeah, and they definitely don't know what I'm going to talk about today. Yeah, so, so this is a one time thing. I mean, because we need to get it accomplished today. I and mean, that's what okay. the agenda is for, to do what the agenda was posted and we made it need to make the decisions on the items on the agenda and, uh, and people would, have had an opportunity it's been posted it's all legal legal and i think most people have had an opportunity to see it let's move on and, and you know because i got some other things to talk about let's get this personnel rules done and put to bed and the employees you know have an opportunity to come to this meeting like all of these folks and let's let's make a decision let's just don't be a you know there's a lot more important things to talk about. Got a new mayor and a new city council. They want to talk about ethics. Well, and I think that's something we ought to be talking about. And I understand we are. Uh, that's a high priority for me. We got this thing about the uh, holidays here, which I personally disagree with this, this as I read it. But so there's some issues that let's get rid of these personnel rules and then move on to other stuff. That's I'm, I and my intent of all of this is not to draw it out. I nobody wants to be in meetings any longer than we have to, and we're spending 45 minutes discussing this again. But I would believe that I am best serving the employees by allowing them a chance to read what the final document is that we're going to make recommendations on. And if I had like a few Scribner things, you know, you know, but I do have some su substantial, not huge, substantial questions. I'm trying to give them that one opportunity. And this would be the last time we would do this because again, we're, we're changing the whole thing after this. So I'll say, I think we should get it all done by June 30th because both Teresa and you are up for reappointment. You may not be on this board well, on July 1st. You probably will. Well, we, we can't. And we, we can't need to get it. We need to get we're it. We're going to do Juneteenth. We got to do it. If, if, if I'm sitting here and we got a bunch of new people, then, then we're going to we're going to start over again, and, right. and I hope you guys will be appointed. But you never know with the new new uh, uh, councilmen; they may have their own people that they put on boards and commissions. So, it's up to you. You're the swing vote. Oh Lord. <laughs> um. I would second the motion. Okay. We're all, well, to. Yeah, we really need one more person if we have a quorum. No, a quorum, who's there? That's You've got a quorum, so, so yes, yeah, so she made a motion, you seconded okay, it. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's all right. I know a lot, of, a lot's been happening since that. So, so, so we got a motion and a second on the table, so now. Discussion or vote? 
I have no further discussion. Okay, nothing here. All in favor? I'm sorry. I don't know if the motion is live. Please forgive me. It, it, yeah. uh, I was hoping that the notice could at least go to the laggers retirees chapter one our <clears throat> representative that we can at least have that when it goes all employees if we can at least have that person. I mean, I would like to be notified. I think that's reasonable. But at least that one that one, one representative from Missouri loggers, whoever that be, being I think that's fair. And that's just one more email. So you're you're amending your motion to include to include that uh notice be of this chain of the changes be sent to not only all active employees by email but also a law the appointed retirees chapter one laggers retirees chapter one yeah probably just needs to go to the president then. yeah yeah we'll go to one so Sorensen can get it and then or whoever ends up and then they can distribute that okay so um i, I amend my motion for that so i would need so I have so moved my motion. So now I need a second on the motion to change the amended motion. The amended motion. Yes. I second that. Okay. So all in favor of the amend amended motion. Bye. I'm I. Me. I. No. Okay. Okay. Settle that. Now now we're back to the motion of <laughs> I can my Robert's rules come in. So now we need to vote on the motion to accept the amended motion as written. I motioned it. You seconded it. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Okay. Did you get that off? I, I don't think it was necessary, but yes, I, okay. I, I will help you with that. Okay. Jump in. You have sent. Yeah, I'm good. I did. Okay. We're ready to move on. So let's go to the um, PMPs. And we're going to look at the. Uh, we're going to go to Article 2 of uh, Personal Policies. And Laura, you have some questions and comments. We'll go to that. Okay. Um, on page two, uh, yes, where the comment says remove redundant, I agree with that. So I just put a note, agree. G, first paragraph, second to the last line is the word is and should be of, I believe, unless I'm mistaken. I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, Section G. Uh -huh. Yeah. First paragraph, last sentence, part words underlined, or in all other terms, conditions, and privileges of employment, not is employment. I have in. I have in employment. I have. Oh, in. I'm sorry. My slash turned in an N into an S. So whatever that word is, it should be. Oh, sorry about that. I might need to go to the eye doctor again, too. <laughs> Okay, um, I want to jump to the bottom of the page. Well, first of all, that note on the comment on the whatever that second comment there is. Why can't I read underneath what I wrote? But I, I wrote disregard, like whatever that was, it was handled. Oh, okay. Um, now, on paragraph eight, the very last line, it says Article 2, Section 1, but that should be Article 1, right? It's I actually, or the complaint procedures, which are, that's what that is. I, it, it was a J that was marked out. Right, but this is beginning, going to become Article 1, so that's what you're saying. That's oh, got it. Yeah. You, you're yeah. talking about the Article 1, got it. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm so. sorry. Yeah, I didn't make the, yeah, um, and I didn't catch that last time. So. Got it. So then just go one up paragraph from there, so the last paragraph of G, just for consistency, not a big deal. See the underlying part, follow the complaint procedure set forth in, I would add Article 1, right. Section 1, just for consistency, not a big deal. Here is one that, uh, well, let me save, let me save this comment because it's a little bigger. Let's maybe just go through some of the questions. What page are you on? Now I'm on page three. Page three, first comment, I, I wrote on there, disregard. So whatever we had, we fixed it, looks good. 
Um, in that same paragraph where we use the word words sex stereotyping, mm -hmm. since that's going to be defined in the um, in the back, then it should be capitalized here, correct? Okay. Again, small thing, but um, then the comment about the definition will be moved. That's yeah. fine with me. Yeah. We'll just yeah, and whatever. Um, under complaint procedures on page four, we've got a, the um, the formatting is kind of is messed <laughs> kind of messed up. Um, I always just do a I don't know what you call that what's that sheet you call where you do all your how you do your capitals and your whatevers and the, oh, instead yeah. of A B C's it should be one two threes. So basically a cleanup of that yeah. and then okay so. Initiation, so I'm looking at the first sentence of what is A there under I. Initiation of an investigation. An investigation may be initiated by any employee, and then I thought we should add, or someone they work with who believes he or she has been a victim of sexual harassment. Because remember, we talked about wanting other people to report things to. Right? Unless, unless I'm mistaken. I don't know. Thinking I was okay. No, uh, we took this from the policy. There was a yeah different policy, right? That was the yeah, that was that and then okay. The, I was trying to recall where mm -hmm. the sorry. Yep. Um, so you're saying an investigation may be initiated by any employee or sorry, I'm trying to or someone they work with. Because remember how we talked about last time we took out the part about like you have to report it or you're going to be in trouble too. So so we, yeah, we took that out. Right. So if we want other people to report it, then. I don't I, I, it doesn't matter to me, I, I but I think that if, if we're going to say that people can report something. That Jim can report that Jane harassed somebody or whatever, then I think you need that in there. But I, I'm not going to hang up I, on that. Whatever. You know, I want to say somewhere in like maybe the sexual harassment or harassment section, I think we kind of make that statement as well. So it would be consistent. consistent right. If right. we just make it, yeah. Yeah. yeah just yeah. consistent. Yeah. Um, and then on the that same paragraph, I think it's the second sentence where it says an investigation may also be initiated. There's a comma there. I, we don't need a comma after also. Small thing. Um, and then the only other item I had on that section, that paragraph is I would switch the last two sentences. Um, because it talks about. It's initiated by then I think it should be a complaint complaint form will be provided by. And then they'll have the option of filing the complaint, but do as you want. I mean, that's again, nothing. I think substantive would just make more sense that way to me in my mind. Um, I, as as you did on, as we did on page six, where we did the little bullets like reasonable accommodation can be the lie, big, you know, blah, 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 yeah, all that. Right. Might try that on there. It gets, it's just, we have so many examples and things like that, but. I don't spend a bunch of time on that. That's not. That's not critical. OK, and then page five. Um, again, we're off on our yeah. stuff, but you'll fix yeah. that. Um, so under what is now D. Two. <laughs> the word judgment is spelled wrong. In that sentence. Small point. Um, uh, the uh, so in this section on what is section E now, so under records of investigation, confidential, okay, um, put in their file. The city manager, so last sentence, the city manager, department director, and the employee who initiated the investigation will have access to this summary. 
should the person who's I'm going to use the word accused, I don't know what the right word is, but should they also have access to that or is that covered because they always have access to their personnel file? So they, they know they can get anything in their personnel file if they want it. Because part of me is like if, if someone depends on if you're filing a complaint, if you feel like you've been, you know, the issue or you can like I'm complaining that I saw John Smith take a bunch of money out of the, you know, billing stuff or whatever. So that, those are kind of weird. That's not harassment. My apologies. Let's right. not use that. That's not harassment. That's an, just a personnel right. issue. I just think that, uh, yeah. you know, I think the person should have access to the document. So you're saying the either the accused or should have access to that summary as well? I would think so. I mean, doesn't that, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm missing the whole point. But no, doesn't that make I sense? don't think so. The, the accused will get a summary. Right. And that's but what this is, they right? don't get, they don't get a record of. I mean, they, they don't. Get so they, they, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not so they do get a summary. The, the accused would get a summary. Or they won't get a summary. Uh, the accused would get like whether they're going to be disciplined or whether they're going to there was no finding of but it was will, not substantiated because for me again it comes down to if i'm representing a member being able to know the information of what they're being accused of so i can represent them fairly well they would get i mean they would know yes they would know what they're being accused of um I mean, would they, if there's an investigation, would they be given information on that investigation? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, but if you're investigating me for something I did wrong and I, you just said, you, you know, someone has accused you of this, then I don't get a chance to hear anything about what you're looking at or talk to you about it, get all that information. Well, I mean, the summary. When you're being summary. interviewed, that would come up. Right. And then if it's substantiated, I mean, we typically would give and it's that's how it's been done forever. I mean, we follow. I mean, that's a long practice of the documentation of whether something's substantiated or not. Sure. But the, the accused doesn't get. I mean, all the notes or name or anything, but they get a, they know what they're being accused of and they do get that. And sure. Yes, and this is the summary I was asking about because it's talking about the summary in this. Yeah, yeah, of course. For a second. But you do, in, in a sense, you give a memorandum outcome of the investigation. Right. It, it's a blanket. They don't get all the information, yeah. but they get they get a highlighted bulletin point of the outcome of the investigation. Yeah, and that's why I'm just asking, should that be added to this paragraph where it says the summary is available? It's in their file and it's available to the city manager, department director, and the person who initiated the investigation. I just think you should also just add in there that the person who's being accused, whatever that summation is, they should have it, which it sounds like they do. It's just we need to just add the words. Am I mistaken on just that piece? Or, I mean, I mean, I guess you might need to, if you need to add language in their redaction of names or, or, or something to that degree, yeah. but. Mm. OK, so let's say it this way. They're, the memorandum is going to their files, right? That says here it will go to the personnel's pers the person's file. So if we don't have it under the sentence with the summary going to them. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, we can add that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they you get do something. it because yeah, they, they do just, get it. They right, do get right. a summary. There we go. Yeah, there we go. They do. So what type of okay. summary do they get? Um, oh, I'm sure it's. Yes. Okay. Yes, it right. is. OK. okay. But because if they're that. if we're giving them a summary and they're getting discipline imposed, we would not necessarily tell the victim what the right specific discipline is, just that it was that it's being handled and you know, blah yeah. blah blah. Right. I mean right. Right. So they're they're getting something, but yeah, we need to add that they are yes. getting something. Yes. It may not be the exact summary. Well, and I and I and I think because it says here it says the employee who initiated the investigation. So if I initiated the investigation blaming you for doing something wrong, they're going to investigate you, right? In the end, should I be getting a copy of that? You're going to get a summary. Yes, and that's what you're going to get a summary. Know how, 
it turned out. We if always you, follow if, up with okay. a summary to the person who started the whole yes. thing. Yes. So they, okay, because I thought it would be like, well, that's a personnel matter. Like, okay, I saw you take the money out of there. We're going to have this investigation. I'm sorry, Laura, you don't get to know anymore. That's the way I always handle HR. You don't get to know anymore. You've reported it. It's done. Like, it's a personnel matter now. Right. But is this different because we're talking about, like, I feel like you have, harassed me in some way. I report that. And then you guys look at it and you go, this is fancy, this is, you know, or whatever it is. Then I think both of us will get it, you know? Yes. But You're correct. Care, I think no. Whether something has been substantiated, unsubstantiated. And again, that's been a long practice. Okay. I We follow okay. the memos that have been there forever yeah. using those exact words of substantiated. Okay. Uh, as as whether it's an internal people. or an as external investigator, it's been a long-standing. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I may be off base here, so help me out. If uh, a representative representing the accused person uh, has to go forward with uh, a case to represent them, how much of that would be denied them to know this that they're employee that the one they're representing. In other words, wouldn't they be able to under, have a, an understanding of maybe confidential of what took place that's got their person in trouble? In other words, would that prevent them from being able to get the full file in representing their employee, their union member, bargaining unit member? I, I don't know if there's something specific in the union contract. So absent that, I'll just tell you from a legal standpoint that it's always been my opinion that personnel records are the city's records on that employee. Okay, I'm, this is just general. Okay, I'm not, but if 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 you were representing me in court because you want to bring a claim, then I think the way they get that is through a discovery request. It doesn't come through like a right. sunshine law request. So that's there's two different things there. But that, that's that's in court as for yes. the union rep. Representing somebody before an arbitrator, uh, being able to access, would this be a barrier to them accessing that file to represent their employee, the party? Would that create a barrier to that? I'm gonna, I don't understand. I'm kind of looking question. to Jennifer for a second here, but have you had um, investigation records are never public? Yeah. So if if it gets to arbitration, the attorneys will have the specifics of the the investigation and, and the outcome. But I don't I've never given an investigation, a full investigation record to any employee. Well, you may maybe have attorney for the city, but the union sometimes doesn't have an attorney. They always they have, have an attorney, account, which is one of their members. It's not necessarily an attorney. I'm just wondering if that'd be a barrier to them getting the disclosure enough to help them represent their their party. Mm -hmm. uh, we run into some. I've of never had that where, issue come up. We so, been, oh, well, this is confidential. We had to fuss it out because we had a right to see what the accusation was. Pardon me. Sorry. Well, we and this is talking about the summary of when the fine when it's done. So. I'm just wanting to know, does this create a barrier to that? That's all. It, it hasn't so far, so I don't. Do you guys have any thoughts? I mean, I've worked with all of you Again, on I, issues. You know, and our process is, is we're notified of, of an employee being um, disciplined. We get. Um, Which that's different. Right. If you have an employee who's being investigated. Well, it's usually followed. It, it's, it's the investigation comes first. And then if they find something from that investigation, then we're notified that there's going to be disciplinary action. There's a specific, Correct. I can't right. remember if you were president yet or not, but there was a, an accusation against one of your members by an external person, and we had to investigate it. Correct. And there was an attorney that, pre I don't think it was, you. yeah, I don't know. Well, it was, it was. But I'm just saying that I mean, well, I know they do. They, refer to, do. But they, had, they had already outside counsel representing them that, at that point. That issue. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I didn't hand my investigation notes over to any no, of you. No, because that, but becomes, it becomes, that becomes another, that becomes yes. an HR issue at that point. Yes. Yes. But so certainly the accusations and everything were 
given to both parties. I mean, right, right. And, and there's some, yeah, and, and there's some circumstances in dealing with that circumstance where it falls outside the scope of the fire department, then you weren't privy to that information that goes to his attorney. Yeah, I'm, you know, yeah, you can't but, cover every single thing because there are some things that are only privy to a right. legal, but it, to but it represents. Counsel. Anything that's in the employee's file is always accessible by that employee. And Correct. We would have them go get whatever, but I verbatim, verbatim of what they call it, I, it's a memorandum of outcome of an investigation. I just happen to have a copy of yep. one yep. right here recently the yeah. that you sent me. Yeah. So they are very good about sending that. It and it it bullet points. It does not give you the whole outcome, but it, the it's enough. It I feel that it's enough of what they give to paint a picture of without blatantly saying we fired this person, we give this person this kind of disciplinary action. So well and you guys are involved anyway. Like you knew that you knew the whole time when all that was going on. Exactly so, right. so yeah. And, and just to clarify for for the committee, I mean what we did with this section, the complaint procedure section was really originally was one little paragraph. And exactly <laughs> Laura, we took exactly what the process we have been using Mm -hmm. And we just inserted it into. So that's what you're okay. saying. It's not like we're creating a whole new process. So just to kind of maybe clarify, this isn't a new process. This is we're taking it from what was an administrative procedure and not in the personnel policy and inserting it into the policy. So yep, I hope that makes sense. So okay, all right. So I'm gonna just make a, a comment here. We're having a lot of people talking over people. So it's difficult for everyone to follow. So if before you make your comment, would you be sure that the person that you're following has finalized their comments? So we're not talking over each other. Sure. Okay, we can move on. Is that your continue? Yes, please. Okay. Page six, little thing um, in that, that first paragraph one there, there's a dash before the city. It's a, uh, is it a, it'll it's clear a up space like that. that's going to be removed. Yeah, that's okay. Going out. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very yeah. good. Because it's a red line. So yeah, I did that. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, number two, I would just take out the first two words. Um, but disabled defined, you know, because like we don't talk about, we don't have a heading for each of the others, but I don't care. That's not, not even something I'm going to, I'll make the point, leave it go, whatever. Okay. Page seven. The only thing there is um, obviously the num the numbering has started over again. Okay. Who fix all that? Yeah. Okay. Page eight. Again, a preference thing. I would put the break time for nursing mothers like at the very end of this because it kind of seems like we're harassing, we're whistleblowing, we're complaining, we're retaliating, and now we're talking about breastfeeding. <laughs> like, I think that should go out there, maybe. But again, whatever. Just for the sake of um let me this is the part that i'm going to have some questions on so i'm just going to see if there's anything else that is like really quick to like completely knock out okay on page 10 and then going into 11 by way of illustration here's some examples of retaliation we've already listed a number of those under section 2a so i would just take out that full three like we don't need to name more of them i think Unless there's specific ones you want that they're here versus there. It just seems like it's repetitive, but um, and then on on page 11 again, the very last paragraph under penalties. Um, I would have the sentence read any employee of the city who engages in prohibited retaliatory action is subject to discipline up to and including termination. So, you know, I mean, I just like that general phrase, like we can have anything for punishment up into, you know, termination instead of leaving in or taking out something that we later wish would have been there and not been there. Okay, so that's all my easier ones. And I'm, I know you guys are going to be able to clarify this because I read it so many times that I, I need your help. Excuse me. Okay, the whistleblower section. What? Oh, I'm sorry, page eight, which is actually C right now, mm -hmm. whistleblower. Um, so this first sentence that's been added. So 
in general, whistleblowers, anyone, and I'm going to emphasize the words and come back and explain, who has and reports insider knowledge of illegal activities occurring within the organization. So we say whistle first. Well, let's take the last one first. Illegal activities. I don't think it has to be illegal because when you go down to this improper government action, it could be like it may not be illegal for somebody may not be illegal may not be breaking a law but it's breaking the public's trust or you know whatever some of these other things are it, it, am i right in that it could be not for instance yeah, again, that's kind of wrong. We have the situation where the police officer is getting paid more, getting paid the overtime. Is that illegal? I guess. I mean, and I'm not trying to adjudicate that here, I, I, but, I know, but know. you know, by ordinance and by policy, you know, no, we, we don't, we don't know. know. Yeah. So, but it's something that would somebody could whistleblow on and not know whether it's illegal. They may be like, I don't know if it's illegal or not, but I see this happening, right? So I'm not big on the word illegal. Um, so what I thought is, and I'm, I'll talk about the rest of the first part of the sentence, but can we just change that to um, of an improper governmental action? Yeah. Which then it's not illegal, dishonest, Sherm uses dishonest, OSHA uses unacceptable. We just say, if you're whistleblowing on an improper governmental action, then that kind of negates whether it's a law or a perception, you know, whatever. So that's my thought on that. Now back up to the part before that where it says who has and reports insider knowledge. And help, just help me here. So if I am, because it says anyone can whistleblow. So I'm a member of the public and I whistleblow on something that I see is, I don't think it's being handled right. But I don't have insider knowledge. I, I just know that I've seen this, you know, it's a concern for me and I'm reporting it. Our insider knowledge to me sounds like that it doesn't, I don't know. Well, if you're just reporting something that you think could be, that's not really whistleblowing. A whistleblower is somebody who is protected because mm -hmm. they do have, they have specific insider knowledge and they're bringing it forward and they need to be protected. Mm -hmm. Anybody can file a complaint. Anybody can file, you know, whatever. Right. But a true whistleblower is somebody who is protected mm -hmm. okay. because they okay. do have specific, they they know specific information. It's not something that I, they just suspect or mm -hmm. that's, so I think that's, that's why example. there's a whistleblower law mm -hmm. and that so I and correct me if I'm wrong like give me, let me give you one more example and if I'm wrong then then that's fine so if I am working in emergency management I'm not working on the EMPG grant but I've heard talk I'm concerned that Dante is applying for EMPG funds patting the records doing something wrong you know, whatever, not reporting correctly or something like that. These are things I've heard. There are things I'm concerned about. Is that considered the insider knowledge that I'm? Yes. Even if it's just my feeling. Well, it's not a feeling. You've heard yeah. actual. Now, whether it's okay. true or not. Well, yeah, no, and that needs that's, to be investigated. That's what, right, but right. That, okay. that you are bringing knowledge that you have gained. Forward, okay. whether it's because you've heard it whether someone has told you, whether you've witnessed it. Okay, okay, yes. I'm good with that then. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. very good. Um, mm -hmm. So then, and I'm good with the anyone, because again, that covers anyone and we don't mm -hmm. have to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. So I would suggest we just get rid of that paragraph A where we're redefining employees for this section, because if it's anybody who can do it, then it's anybody, right? It's not just employees, it's, not temporary full time. I mean, it's anybody. All right, would you agree?
Well, I think the protection, though, when I t we talk about whistleblower, the protection, I mean, if an outsider comes in and brings some information, obviously we, we protect them to some degree, whether it be their identity, but the employee is our, you know, is our employee. And so, um, you know, when we read the rest of this section, it, it makes sense to keep it. In there, because it specifically talks about employees, it, it doesn't. It does talk about then uh, reporting procedures for for employees, and those type of things. I just think it makes sense to leave it in there. I get what you're saying. I don't like redefining anything that is because, you know, you know, we talk about permanent or temporary, full time, part time, interim. You know, we could also say exam, non exam. Like you know what I mean? Like we divide employees up in so many different categories for different reasons um and then you know we'll use in a sentence like like in paragraph four we don't capital it'll say the supervisor and employee you know we don't say employees to include blah, 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 you know so if if you're and this goes back to your point which after i reread some of this and understood what you were getting here where you were saying where i was saying i don't want it to say includes members of the boards and whatever you were talking about this isn't about I guess there's whistleblowing and then there's whistleblowing protections, right? And that's in the the next section, right? No. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it as this. I personally don't like redefining employee. To include things that like us that are not employees. I don't, I don't if you want to say whistle whistleblower means anyone employed by the city in a temporary da, 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 and all these things. But, but instead of using the word, instead of redefining the word employee here for one section, I would rather say you use a different word like whistleblower could be any of these. And then just in this section, you say. You say employees reporting or the, you know, you talk about the whistleblower or whatever. I just, I don't, I don't like that renaming that, but I will not argue that further. That's, I'll let that be up to you guys. Um, okay, then under improper governmental actions, I went out and looked at some sample language from Sherm and a couple of places. And this is the, this is the part that I, um, and, uh, confused on okay so third line down okay let's go back page eight section c subsection one b the fourth line down it says you look for the word undertaken and it says undertaken during the performance of each person's duties to the city or under color of city authority so first of all i want to make sure we're only talking about on duty issues or are we also talking about off duty issues? Does that make sense? Because and I'm not really sure what the phrase under color of city authority. I've never heard that phrase before. It is a, 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 probably more of a legal term of art. Um, so, I mean, we could have situations where, and I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, we have this come up for, uh, for example, you may have a mayor who is posting information on Facebook. Um, and what, what courts have said is, is, you know, well, is that government speech? Is that public speech? And um, a lot of times, some of the cases, what they're saying is, is that, well, depending on how he was acting, if he was acting in his duties as the mayor, if he was acting under color of, I see you know, color of city authority, you know, maybe there's a way I can rephrase that or even take that out if that's, you know. I, it, and if it's, if it's, it, like I said, it's a term of, I feel like. Yeah, it's like a legal, legal term, which people might not understand. I mean, I mean, like, you know, like, for yeah. instance, when I worked at Medac, it was. That phrase would have been if you end up with your medic shirt on in a yeah. bar, right? You are being yeah. you can be recognized yeah. as a county in that case employee, right? That's a problem, right? You're on Facebook with a shirt on dancing on a table at a bar. Again, you're associated with that. 
So something like that. Yes. So right. it is about things. Okay, so let me let me ask it another way, just so I can try to understand. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, the somebody's in a bar with their uniform shirt on, right? And they're off duty. I mean, my God, if they're on duty, that's like another thing. Right. If they're off duty and somebody, you know, takes a picture of them, sees them drinking at a bar with their shirt on. That is not an. Is that it's because that person's not being paid. They're not on the clock right now. And so you would have to be talking about like, you know, hourly and stuff like that. Because I get like exempt or. Uh, you know. Salary versus non salary, the word I'm trying to get out. So if that person is off duty. And they have something like this. Is it improper governmental action? Because if they're not working, it's not a government action. They're drinking at a bar. That's not a governmental action. Maybe I just don't get this. Yeah. But it's a new phrase to me. I had to go looking at definitions and stuff to understand. Well, and I think the the other issue here is just it, each situation will be a different situation. Are they holding themselves out as oops, I'll get that close? I'll get it. I'll get it. You talk. No, no. Um, they may be, if, are they holding themselves out as, you know, a city employee? I'm wearing my uniform. Um, I'm at an event. Maybe I'm not really supposed to be working it like a concert or something, but I go ahead and I, I've got my uniform on, I assert my authority or, or what have you. I mean, so it, it, it's hard because it's, it's a very fact specific situation, what you're asking. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I, yeah. I'll, if I'm speaking out of turn, and I don't know if that even falls over the context of whistleblower as opposed to, right? I mean, we, we've used that example. I mean, that. Right, but I think I think that what this is trying to get at is is that if I'm, if I'm, let's say, a police officer, and I'm wearing my uniform and I'm out and I'm, you know, trying to pick a fight yeah. or I'm doing something like that. I could be, you know, yes. that's that's where we get in trouble here. And if somebody, you know, if a, someone sees me and says, "Hey, so and so, we're at a line," and and uh, you know, that, they, and I, that would yeah. be a good reference of, you know, if I'm at a concert and I'm giving myself a security, right, mm -hmm. in uniform, yes, and you're not, and you're not, mm -hmm. not licensed to be there, be right, be there in that capacity. We're not, yeah. Again, it's. Uh, I mean, and I think maybe some of it gets to because I also underlined the expectation of a con you know that violates the public's trust or expectation of their conduct. You know, like as you mentioned, you probably get more complaints that you're like, yes, I, that is your expectation of how they conduct themselves, but that is not out of line with what we think. So you you do your due diligence and you you're like, nope, that's doesn't go on to an investigation. So right. because and, you know, expectation of the public could be, you know. I expect their shoes to be polished and their shirt right. to be in and their belt to be on and they don't. And you're like, okay, that's mm -hmm. not exactly. And I call that most of the time. I call right. Some of that's just complaint. It's you know complaint. what I mean? Just filing yeah. a complaint. Right. Yeah. But here we're talking about, yeah, I think more of a serious type of yeah. really some kind of inner insider knowledge right. or something like mm -hmm. stealing money, those types of things that would yeah. be, yeah, that's, that's what we're trying to get at. But yet yeah, it's hard I, to craft. I feel better with that view. And the, the one concern I had, and again, I don't want to speak out of turn, um, is the the public's expectation of employees' conduct. And I think that's incredibly vague statement. Um, does that mean that any segment of the public might take offense to an off-duty conduct? Is that considered improper governmental action? I just think it's an incredibly vague statement. No, and it could. And again, I think the way it would happen is, is you'd have someone say, hey, you know, they make a complaint and like Jennifer does is you you get a complaint, you yeah. investigate it and whether it really falls in this section. Or if you're just like, OK, that's right. Thank but you I get your, your, your point is well taken. Yeah. Your, yeah. your point is taken. <clears throat> because public's trust can be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're dealing with all stretches. They're, I'm, you know, speaking on my side, but. <clears throat> And there might be people that hate firefighters. I hope I. Right. <laughs> oh, no, no. You know, so. I think they love all firefighters. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's just, always somebody like who's going to make a statement. I'm not sure if something can be cleaned up there. Okay. The terminology can be adjusted there. Um, I think that is a, is a okay. good interpretation. Did you, did you get that? Who's going to get it? 
but I do like the fact that it would, I want to say, come out in the wash, you know. Uh, yeah, you know. Exactly. This is, yeah, exactly. Siphon it down to, yes, no, yeah. oh, mm -hmm. no, we don't have an issue. It's gone. Or, mm -hmm. yes, 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 it's an issue. And then, of course, it's up to the parties to argue whether that's. Uh, on that issue, uh, I think that someone could have a private or personal uh, interpretation of what's expected conduct, and any definition you could give that might help. This is one, or it's you re you reduce the ambiguity over the vagueness of it to where we have a kind of a standard of what's what's expected. That I, I think it's wide open to one time we had to answer for a person drinking chocolate milk in a provincial car and the press uh, the people thought it was beer. Mm -hmm. I mean that you, you leave yourself wide open to uh, a private interpretation of, of conduct. So that's my input. I think that's gonna happen no matter what. I would just tell you, I think that those types of things are gonna happen no matter what we have here. But I, I, I but then again it'll point. fall out. Like well, we checked yes. with the guy and he's like, Well, I was drinking this chocolate yeah. milk. And you're like, Okay, this is not yeah. a whistleblower. Public this person, is not thank yeah. you for your comment and we will take it up. Because I don't even think you go back to the public. Like if they complain about they blew through a stop sign or something, you're like, okay, thank you, we'll investigate. You don't call that public person back and say, hey, we investigated and we found that right. Jim Smith ran through the, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. that's another one. Okay, um, page nine. Um, that section E, okay, 2E. Okay. Talking about retaliation. I mean, we have that in the very next section. So I, I would take it out, but if you don't want to, it's just assigned to the next okay. page, so. And so this will be my final question. So the, where it says employees who carry out the following on good faith, reasonable belief, I'm sorry, section D right above it, entitled to protections. In, so I have to cooperate in the investigation and testify if there's a proceeding. So if for some reason, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to see an example here because like these are things these are things that either that don't like never come up in my HR work. Um, so I come to you as a whistleblower and say I believe or I've seen or I've whatever, and you're like, okay, as long as you cooperate and agree to testify, if it comes to that, we will protect you. We won't say your name. You know we'll you know, the two protections or whatever. And if I say, you know what, I'm just reporting this to you. I'm, I'm gonna give you what information I have and then I am gonna walk away. I don't like, I don't wanna go back and forth with you. It is, I consider it your thing um, or I'm, and I know there's talks about bodily harm. Like I'm not gonna get up in front of those people and testify it because I'm scared, you know, whatever it is, then I lose the ability to re to be to remain confidential. So I think with regards to this, um, I think the one thing is is that um, you know these are I would say a little maybe more serious infractions versus kind of what we're talking about yeah. because this is insider stuff. So going back to maybe the example of okay, if you think someone is stealing money yeah. from the city, and so they would make that report and then i mean if if it were and really in my profession so far i've not seen any go on to court like i they've been involved in a couple of law state clerks for example that took some money and it never really got to court but for those that were reporting we needed to make sure that there was somebody that was a reliable witness. They could say, I and saw that, her take the money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, and that the investigators could talk to those people and, and those types of things. So so I, that's really what we're getting at here. Um, but that's definitely something I can take a closer look at if there's heartburn about something about it. Um, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily know if it is. I just like, I'm like, what if I, 
you know, like I've, I've whistleblowed and now I'm scared to death. Right. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and I, I want to, want to participate and, you know, do what I can. But if I say, you know, I, I'm, I'm to that point where I feel like I can't do something anymore. You're not going to, and I don't think we're going to do this anyway. You're not going to be like, hey, well, it was Laura Dominic who reported it, everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. you don't lose Well, if it got to the that. point where it would be, there would be testifying and stuff, I mean, the person may have to. I mean, there there may not be a choice. There may be a there, subpoena, for a subpoena it. or something. Yeah. Right. If it got that serious, otherwise we try to keep everything as confidential as we possibly can, right. and you know, depending mm -hmm. on what it is, you know. I mean, you're. Yeah. You're, it feels like you're talking like. I mean, like. I mean, right. hopefully We're, that you wouldn't be so. There would be nothing at the city of Independence that would be threatening or that you would be I, I don't know maybe maybe I'm wrong I haven't seen anything well, that's like why that but, the whole retaliation policy. right yeah, yeah. I mean, right. right but retaliation is you know well, I, I, you're I'm saying like if somebody's gonna come out or <laughs> you know I'm gonna yeah. yeah so it's not right I it's think. not like retaliation where I'm gonna hide outside your house and you know which that's to me not retaliation that's that's way beyond <laughs> You know, when we talk about retaliation, we're talking about treating you differently in the in the mm -hmm. um, in the course of your employment, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Yeah. And then we refer to bodily harm, but you're like, we get it. Like, if yeah, there's a threat to bodily harm, then we will, oh my, protect you. I mean, it says that. I, yeah, you yeah, know, right. yeah. I mean, it. Mm -hmm. so, I, right. you, yeah, you knock on wood that nobody else. But I, I can't. I mean, I can't say. I think we have to keep the testifying in there because it may not be. We might not be able to say you don't have to testify. That may be above. Mm -hmm. yeah. That may be above our heads. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. no, if okay. FBI mm -hmm. or, or I mean, you, you never know. Mm -hmm. I just I just don't want to think that. I mean, if I get subpoenaed, I mean, yeah. you're if you're a decent person. You don't want to get in trouble with the judge. You're going to go. Right? And like that could lead to problems on your end. Right. So, but I don't. If if for some reason I just I can't participate or anything. I just want to know that I still have confidentiality. And if you guys decide not to go forward, then you know, if I'm subpoenaed, I go. But I just don't want people to lose the protection from whistleblowing once they've whistleblowed. OK, moving on. Yes. Article two, if I can make my two comments. Quickly, one. very quickly. Pardon? Quickly. Okay. Uh, page 714, uh, item D, for request for accommodation being processed. Uh, if you have a current employee that's hurt, they run out of accrued vacation or sick leave, they're eligible to be dismissed. And I'm, I'm pleading for there to be a consideration that until that determination has been made that they're still at least an unpaid employee, that they haven't been removed from the employee roles. Or they're, they're, I've seen that happen where they didn't, uh, they, would, they hadn't made a determination on accommodation to force the person to go ahead and take a, a retirement rather than letting them stay on the roll till they could figure it out. So I'd like you to consider some language that gives us an idea that they can hold on. You have a cop shot on duty, a fireman falling off a roof, or somebody work, working on their day off and they break their leg, or they have something we if you can have accommodation for them, we'd at least like to keep them on until you've made the final determination we can't accommodate them. You know, and rather than let them run their time out and say, well, too late, you're fired. That's my concern on that. It, and is that not covered by that paragraph? It, yeah, and I we, think it is, we do that anyway. I mean, that's under, we have a whole section of disqualification and, and being, yeah, because yeah, that well, request is for accommodation being processed and may be placed on paid or unpaid yeah. leave of absence. So I think we're covered there. You think may covers not will be or shall be placed on paid or unpaid leave? I, I, yeah, I think so. I think, I think so. I think so. I said my, uh, page one of 14B, I, uh, I don't understand how a definition to bridge the charter saying the director of which shall be personnel director I think that shall is controlling I and I'm I'm lost on the rationale to use a four letter word for a personnel director versus what the people of independence voted to be a personnel director we we call the parks and recs director of parks and recs 
uh, health director, maintenance uh, PWO as public works director, uh, police chief, fire chief. We use all these terms that the people voted for all other terms, and I'm lost at why we would not use personnel director, which is voted by the people. And I, if I, if it's possible, could I get the would you advance the rationale for your liberty to on why you want a four letter word and a different name when all the others are the charter is specific on that? And I know there's a heightened interest in ethics and living by the charter as I watched in this last election. So I think when it might be exposed to someone bringing that issue up in public, that why aren't we following the chart? If you're wanting to change the charter, why aren't we following it now? So I, 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 can I get a rationale of that possible? Are we going to cover that in, in the uh, definitions? Right. Yes. Exactly. Well, the way I, I read the charter is is that there shall you know shall be a personnel director. That that is this person. We have that. We have that. It's just it doesn't say shall be called the personnel director. It's just there shall be a personnel director, and that's and the city has a personnel director. So we're calling the yes, she has a different title. Um, but it's the same thing, and that's what we're going to handle in the in the definition section. As we will we will reference that the mm -hmm. chief uh, human resource <laughs> officer is the personnel director, you know, under the charter. So we'll that's how we'll bridge that. But that's that's what her letterhead says. That's what. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just yeah how that is. So yeah. Does that presume you could call the city manager CEO or the finance director the chief no. finance no. finance officer? I I don't I don't think there's Forgive me, but it seems a bit like sophistry to say, well, you can, the charter says this, but you can call them something else. Well, the charter says you should have, shall have a personnel director. And, and, the, and they do. Okay. But it didn't say you shall call that person personnel director. Okay, we're moving on. Moving on. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. One Thank you. Yes, Just go ahead. Quick. Yeah, uh, when she brought up the, the section on whistleblowers, uh, it jogged my thinking a little bit. I believe that one of the things we ought to be looking at is a code of conduct for city employees, an ethic policy. Now, we just had the election and the new mayor, I don't even know, I never met him, is talking about ethics for elected officials and people of higher status. I think those kind of things ought to apply to all city employees. And, uh, you know, I think if we had some policies like that, and we may have, some that are here, maybe we would not have had the uh, police overtime issue because presumably a, a, an employee would have known better and that the city manager and the mayor are not parents, but they have to be responsible, the employees. And I'm assuming we have a lot of professional people here working for the city. So I'd like to look at, you know, I don't know whether it should be inserted in this policy or whether we should have a standalone code of conduct, an ethics policy. In other words, what, what is the policy for the city of Independence when an employee is offered a free meal or a free bottle of wine at Christmas time or a free Christmas turkey? Um, I don't know what the definition of it is. Uh, you know, some places say, well, you can accept up to 50 bucks. Other places, uh, you're not allowed to take anything. And I, in my municipal experience in a couple of city governments, you know, if somebody bought the lunch, I wrote a check back to them and gave the money back to them because I don't need to take their free lunch. So that's the kind of examples that we ought to be thinking about, particularly as we've had a change in administration, that employees, you know, we're paying hopefully good uh, wages, need to take a little responsibility for their behavior and say, well, I'm not sure that this is the proper thing that we're doing. Let me double check it and see if it's OK that if I do this secondary occupation. And if that had been in effect, we might not have had all that negative publicity. So anyway, that's that's all I have to say on it. So and that's what we're coming up on, right? We're doing ethics policy next, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. I have one further point because I marked it for the one minute. Okay, let's move. Okay. Um, uh, we had in here before we had the mention of 
affirmative action and it still says on the website that we have an affirmative action policy. So I don't know where that should be. I know where it was, but um, I mean, I assume we still have that policy. I'm assuming so. Um, is it an administrative policy, the affirmative action? Or do you have to okay. Sorry. We'll look at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the okay. previous one, that language is crossed out. So it's it's in there somewhere. Or maybe I, maybe I made a note. Okay, uh, in the previous one, bottom of page two of 11, the city council by resolution has adopted an affirmative action plan and the goal of which is to achieve blah, 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 blah. So it was in there before. I just don't see it anywhere in here now and I don't know if it no, should I be there or what. I had a note that we were going to move that to the hiring section when we got to oh, okay. yep. um, that section so that we thought that was a better spot. Excellent. Yeah. That takes care of that. Okay, I'm done. Okay, <clears throat> back to the agenda. Are there any other line of anything else? Okay. We have to talk about the question. Hold on, quick. just make sure we got this right. So, went through all these changes. We have the feedback. So, based on the previous motion, okay, we have another meeting. Prior to that meeting, we post this and email it to folk, to employees and then um we have and we have an agenda that says hearing on article two or whatever it is and then we move forward correct yes okay so before we move on we need a recommendation or you know a motion to move forward that way so there are no more changes this is it Give us that direction and we'll set that process that you just established in motion. Yeah, I, I don't want to make a motion that there will be no more changes because if something small changes needs to change, but no more big changes. But I don't, don't think we should have to. How about that. how about this? How about a motion to direct staff to notice a final, I'll say final version for public hearing at the May Sorry, May 13th. 13th meeting. Unless we want to move it. Does that sound closer, Adam? Do you think yeah. that'll work? Yeah, that would. Does that work? Yeah, we'll just we'll just put this on the next regularly scheduled meeting. And okay, yeah. 10 days prior and everything. Yeah, so. Like we did this time. Yep. So we'll just email. Now, people. now I, I want to say too, just, just as I'm looking at the dates and somebody else look to make sure I'm right here. So 10 days in advance of the 13th, if we go by 10 working days, is April 29th. I'm not, I know mean, you'll count that out. But then if we recommend and have the public hearing on the 13th, then the council will not hear it oh, because it's a resolution, so they can pass it by resolution on June 6th. They don't need a first and second reading. Sorry, I was getting confused Correct. because right. it's a second reading. So we'll have a hearing, not a public hearing, on, on yeah. May 13th. Yep, yeah. okay, very good. <clears throat> All right, anything else? Will the language of the change be published? Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. part of their motion, yeah. That was part of the direction they gave us in the previous action. And since we were so at this point now that we're coming up i'm sorry just on a public hearing then on the final are you wanting is the expectation is is that we now produce a total changes version and a clean version in the packet is that what i just want to make sure that we're when we come before the public hearing are you or you just want the final version of what we're bringing okay thanks yeah. clean yeah we don't need clean a line. not a red line Okay, got it. No, okay. no, 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 no. It'll show it's stricken language and new language. Nope. Just new language. It's going to be just, yeah, how this is going to be the final version is that's what's going to be coming forward. That's what's going to be presented as part of, and that's what will be in the packet. It's just that final version. Not the red line. No red line. Nope. Just okay. like as if you hand it to us, you want it to look like that? Yes. We yeah. say, yes, take it to them and they go. Again, not to be nitpicky here. Yeah, I'm not. We want to make sure that we're. You know, meeting all the expectations yeah. of this group. So, so we don't yep. want any trip ups. Nope, no. I agree. See, so the, the people in the past have had stricken and new where they could analyze. So it's kind of a change from what we had in the past. But not everybody's in, in on the circle like us to know what was there and what wasn't. 
So well, that's we've been, been sending that out. out so. Well, but, so that's where the public hearing comes in. We open the hearing, and if there's anybody else who has anything they want to say, then we take it that into consideration. And if we're like, nope, you know, whatever. And then once we're public hearings closed, she'll call for a vote on it, and then we'll vote to recommend or not. So. Okay, so we do we have a motion on the table? I'm sorry, I don't. Have anyone uh, motion? I would make a motion to Laura. table this item until the next meeting. Wait, not Laura to. OK, I'm sorry. A motion to direct staff to hold the public hearing at the next May 13th. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, I, yeah. yeah, no, that's fine. So so I motioned that. Laura, yes, got the motion. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just want to. <laughs> do we have a second? Yes. Uh, Favor. Aye. No. Can we move on now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we go to the Juneteenth holiday agenda item under old business? Well, I'll, I'll start it. I, I got this and you know, as the city wants to make a presentation. Uh, I watched Channel 7 like most people do. And I heard the city manager say we were short three to four million in the general fund and the city wants to have police cameras 200 of them will cost 1.7 million dollars uh and the idea that we add another holiday i understand will cost roughly 350 thousand dollars and i'm not sure whether that includes overtime replacements which would be a premium pay time and a half I believe that we need to, if we've got excess money to throw around, we need to spend money on wages, benefits, and things like, let's redo the fire stations. Let's paint and do whatever we can for $350,000. May not seem like a lot of money, but it, but it really is when you're semi-broke. And uh, I went on Google and I looked at all the, places I could find about holidays. And the federal government has 12 holidays. Uh, I didn't see any city governments anywhere around here that had 13 holidays. And I don't think independence with the financial shape it's in should be adding another holiday. So reading what we were handed today, uh, it appears that we're going to change to Juneteenth, which I'm in agreement with, I'm fine with that. We're going to keep President's Day in some format as a floating holiday. So that gave us 13 holidays. Um, the other consideration, anytime you change benefits, and I used to negotiate co uh, contracts, a couple of city governments, you have to take it to each of the unions. And guess what? Maybe the unions would want something more than a holiday. Maybe they want a ben benefit for a better dental plan. So you're gonna spend this much money and you're going to add a 13th holiday, which will make the city of Independence look like a joke because nobody else, in my knowledge, is doing it. Let's do Juneteenth. And if you've got to have a 13th holiday, have voting day. Have voting day consistent with the John Lewis voting bill and one other piece of legislation in Congress. That makes a lot more sense than to keep Mattress Day. I call the President's Day Mattress Day because who celebrated anything on Mattress Day? Uh, I didn't. You know, casinos used to have a, a lot of business for uh, President's Day, but who celebrates that holiday? So that's my feeling. I'm, I'm going to vote no, adding the 13th holiday. Uh, I'll vote in favor of Juneteenth. That's all I got. I just didn't elaborate on that. I don't know how, how deep you dug, but state recognizes 13 great county recognizes 14 holidays and gives the birthday to the employees they're not even union so i don't know where you did your research but if you want to be informed might do a little better digging on that well what does lee summit blue springs and kansas city do well well yeah but you said that you couldn't find anybody well i great county i don't even know where that's at so. north 20 minutes um, 
I'm sorry, I didn't it's check. I didn't check Ray County. It's not a Richmond, but the state of Missouri. Right? You know, I could check Costco. I could check Costco, and they got six. So somewhere between Costco and the but federal Costco government. Costco just gave their employees a floating holiday in place of the June. And maybe they got seven now. So. Um, I believe. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Rick. Um, I personally believe that we should just add June Juneteenth to on the list of the current holidays to the personnel policies and procedures as drafted before, which is basically one line adding that and and be done with it. And then uh, I'll have to say sorry to the union. You guys, you guys will have to negotiate how that works with your contracts. That's nothing we can do. That I think we should just add Juneteenth. I think it will. Actually, I think it will raise awareness. I think it will look good on independence that we are honoring something that has become a very, when I say popular, I don't mean like a fad. I mean, like it's a it's a diversity, equity, and inclusion mm -hmm. is a big thing, and this is part of that. And I think we could actually have Meg put out a statement that says we've adopted that as a holiday. And then however it's administered or put on the contracts and mm -hmm. all that stuff, that's not us. Well, maybe I'll make a motion that we observe Easter as a holiday. That means a lot more to me than Juneteenth or it, President's Day. Well, it's not to me Easter's that coming up here. We can celebrate Easter or the employee's birthday. Some places do that. You know. If you want to make a motion, I, I second that. What's that? I second. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's not mix. Let's not mix in and out. <laughs> <Second one. laughs> oh, you're the only one that agrees. <laughs> okay, I. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion. I mean, where, I mean, but the point is, where are you getting the money at? Maybe the city manager can tell us where the money's going to come from. So, because, because if you keep spending money on stuff like this, how are you going to spend general fund money? How are you going to be able to finance the important things like wages at the next negotiation or trying to fix up some of these fire stations or this this dumpy city hall we got? You know, so, I mean, it's kind of like, what do you want to spend money on? Yes. A um, couple things. Uh, the, the when we did our analysis citywide, any any given holiday, you know, there's a productivity cost associated with someone not working, right? So th that's absolutely, you know, someone's, you know, if if, um, you know, if there's a holiday, someone's not fixing potholes or someone's not doing, you know, my job. But, okay. So. There's an absolute productivity cost with that. That is, you know, average daily payroll here is about three hundred thousand dollars. That's where that number comes from. Okay, that's a productivity cost, but it's not a sunk cost necessarily. We're paying them. We're paying an employee to either be here or not be here. Right? Fifty thousand dollars is generally what a holiday costs us. That's overtime. That's the um, you know that's the holiday pay. That's um, the premium. The pay premium that pays about. that that we that we give employees to recognize the fact that they're working instead of spending time with their family, mm -hmm. and um, and there's there's a you know there's a sacrifice there that employees make to not be with their family. So that's what fifty thousand dollars. So all told, you know, it's three hundred fifty thousand dollars. But the three hundred thousand dollars, I'm not saying that's I'm not trying to diminish that cost here at all. Because I, you know, I believe in productivity just like just like anybody else, but it's not a cost. And part of our rationale by suggesting, okay, you know, I mean, if on the on the front of your packet, okay, if you have your packet at the top, there's a purpose statement there, independence for all purpose statement. Okay, in that purpose statement, it says, you know, our quality neighborhoods, 21st century jobs, growing economy safe family friendly community and cultural diversity makes independence missouri a nationally recognized city with a unique history and sense of place okay you know we consider this is the independence for all is a very important document that we use as a guide uh in the absence of direct policy making we use that as a guide in our decision making and our recommendations part part of our recommendation here is informed by that purpose statement that's a meaningful document that the city council adopted that the community spent a lot of time providing input in. Okay. So part of our rationale for that $50,000 is, okay, we're going to recognize Juneteenth. It's an important holiday. It is consistent with our independence for all strategic plan. But we will convert another holiday to offset that $50,000. 
So that's it's essentially cost neutral in a lot of ways, but we're giving employees that a, a floating holiday, essentially another vacation day that they can use throughout the year on their own. That would not result necessarily in special premium pay. I mean, sometimes whenever we have employees out, it creates a chain reaction for the fire department, for instance. <laughs> but that's part that's just part of our operations. That's you know, that's part of it. But um, you know, from in a lot of ways it's cost neutral. Um, because we wouldn't yeah. in the future be closed on President's right. Day. Right. So we would be fully operational. Right. Can I, can, like the original that we had, which I don't mm -hmm. have in front of me, like three months ago now. Yeah. Did it just not add that? To the list of holidays. Well, it's the recommendation has changed. Yeah. We're, so, oh, I know. And okay, okay. So you're based on about a that. lot of the conversations. Yeah. Well, okay. that's why I was yeah. I was saying that I would make a motion to just add it as a holiday. Right. Deal with it. Yeah. But you're I, talking I, our, about our recommendation and is to not is to is to you is know the, as as it is here. We'll add that as a hot as a city holiday. We'll convert President's Day to a to a floating holiday for the employees used throughout the year. That mitigates against those, those that overtime costs that we have on any and premium pay we have on okay. any given mm -hmm. holiday, and that gives employees some flexibility. Like maybe yeah. they want to have mattress day off, or they want voting day off. <laughs> I love that. Or, you or, get your mattress. Or you know they they want to take yeah. their birthday off, or their child their children's birthday off, or opening day of Royal Stadium. Mm -hmm. So that gives people the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, so what I hear you saying is essentially it's about fifty thousand dollars, which is it, it washes it. So have we looked at the fuel cost savings that with power and light not running, um, electricity and all the buildings that we're going to save, water departments not running. Be it, I mean, so we when you look at you said three fifty, but it's a wash on the three hundred thousand dollars side. So the premium pay cost is fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. We also got to look at the savings that we're not operating that facility that day because we're not actually losing revenue, which is the customers are still paying the bills. We're still bringing in the money into the city. So I think that it would offset the cost a whole lot more. I mean, I've got somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty three trucks and ten twelve machines that run daily. And the fuel cost right now is going to be a substantial savings mm -hmm. if we are closed for a 13th day and I'm not running metal arc lights in my building that are eating electricity like crazy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that number is going to get down a whole lot less than that 50,000 when you're running minimal staffing, also. So, you're so basically, though, you're not putting any value on those hours of production that the city employees provide. Those thousand FTEs times eight hours, that's 8,000 productive hours that are no longer going to go to the citizens of independence to fix potholes, to building inspections, to doing all the other tasks and duties. We're going to lose that. So it makes, you know, close for December. You know, might as well just close down for December. It makes about as much sense because you're saying, well, let's save money that way. But we're closed for a month. They're proposing giving eight hours to every employee. So you're losing that productivity, just not all in one day. But you're losing it across the board because you're going to give every employee a day off. So you might not lose it all on this day, but throughout that physical year, you're still losing the same amount of hours of productivity mm -hmm. any which way you go about it. So whether it's one day that the city's closed for everybody or it's spread out over 365 days, mm -hmm. you're still losing it. So really all that it's costing you to add that 13th day, the way that it's proposed is that $50,000 in premium time, but you have to take all of the cost savings of not operating all of the city facilities at that present time. I don't know what that is. Let's just throw a number and say it's $15,000 for everybody not to run fuel. So now you took that 50 to 35,000, we closed the day. Oh, well, we so could save a lot more money. Why don't we close five fire stations? Not, it's not. Makes about as much sense. Let's close down five fire stations for a day. Well, we can't. I mean, I don't understand. We can't, it. We can't do that. That's service. <laughs> You're taking the service away from the citizens of this town by saying you're saying that those eight thousand hours are worthless. You know. You know. I mean, people are not going to get their services done, and aren't we supposed to be? You know, we want to do do well by the employees, of course. But I mean, the citizens are one that are losing the, the production. 
you're disvaluing their eight thousand dollars. Is can I ask a, a question a little tangential? But how does this work? When I whenever I read something about giving eight hours, I think about people who work eight to five Monday through Friday. How does this affect twenty four hours? Does it affect anything with you? We're on a forty nine and a half hour work week, so different how that will affect us. So we, I had I had sent an email to to Jennifer, and obviously we had to have a conversation on how that would play out. Okay. But we, there's a lot of questions that are unanswered there and how that would work. Okay. Again, I, th I think the focus really should be on the personnel manual and the language of the personnel manual. All, all our all our groups have mechanisms uh, to to work through, you know, changes that happen in between work agreements. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. and I know Jennifer and Chris have already they started that conversation, and you know, we we do that. We we enter into agreements. In between, you know, renewals to to make accommodations, and we we generally cooperate really well together on a lot of those things. Okay, so I think the really the focus is is this: do you, do you want to make a recommendation that this goes to the council? We we will bring be bringing this forward. Okay, so it will show either the personnel board, you know, recommends what staff does or they don't, but mm -hmm. it's going to go forward regardless. Right. right. And I think that to to Ron's point about deciding whether we want to spend any more money or not is the city council's you know eventual decision. They have to say right. if the council says, right. "Sorry, that's all great, fine, you want that, but it's yeah. going to cost us X amount of dollars. Okay. We don't want to do it." Mm -hmm. We said we think it's a good thing. But 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 you know, a lot of times you put the city council on the spot. It says, "Okay, our appointed citizen board recommends it, so it must be okay." The planning commission recommended this <laughs> rezoning. So it's gone through that process, and they think think it's okay. You know, let's it's better occur. You know, so sometimes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we may may need to make a decision. No, we will. And like he said, regardless if we say yes or no on the whatever mm -hmm. day we meet on the public hearing, mm -hmm. yes or no, mm -hmm. they take it, whatever. And if they, I mean, usually you know anything that's on the agenda for a council meeting has mm -hmm. the the financial impact. Yeah. And you say and, this. And we will. The, do this, all that. the same information that I just explained to you will be included in that package. And mm -hmm. believe me, um, you know, I'm in the depths of budget and, mm -hmm. and uh, the one that works with our labor groups on wages and everything else. So mm -hmm. um, I try to be as fiscally conservative and responsible mm -hmm. as we can be within our means. And this seem to strike a reasonable balance between being fiscally responsible and also mm -hmm. being consistent with what independence for all says and what many other not all but many many communities are doing mm -hmm. and one scrivener thing um on that second paragraph there says well, you know give it on january 1st must be used during the calendar year just to add that word year there can I just ask the last question? Do you know how many of our neighboring cities have adopted this policy yet? Yeah, we. Yeah, Tennessee, Missouri has. The last Sorry. I heard, there was like 65% or 70% of Missouri cities have. Um, there was adopted a, there, June 3rd or June 10th. Something like that. It, it was, mm -hmm. I, I saw a, a Missouri city manager survey done, and those who responded, it was, it was well above 50% that had. Um, and it's not, and it doesn't hurt for us to lead too. I mean, it's a good thing, I think. And if we're leading a little bit. Again, I mean, I go back to the independence for all is supposed to have some kind of meeting. Um, we can put words on paper, but if we don't follow that through with any kind of action, then it's just words. So. Is there a motion by Ford on June June eighth holiday? I would, I would make the motion the same as I did for that other item, just to talk about this item. Same wording, but referencing this policy change, right? And what is that wording? What you're going to put on the agenda for next time, right? On the next agenda, we will put the whatever. So our, our preference was, um, you know, we've 
we posted this properly. Yeah. So our preference was to go ahead and take a resolution forward to the city council. Um, I know we're already kind of <laughs> deviating here. I know that's uh, why I'm not. So okay. our preference, because of you know, we have uh, schedules that need to be adjusted. You know, success group, uh, all 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 our labor groups, uh, all our people have make plans. Um, our preference was to go ahead and take this forward to the council um, as a resolution to amend the personnel manual to adopt this as a city holiday. And that would then enable us to quickly work with relevant labor groups on, on how we can um, work with them on this holiday. So this is, you know, to, to me, this is not as a material change as some of those other article that's those are some significant um wide ranging implications this is what well, it does have a fiscal impact it impacts employees from a whether they work that day or not kind of thing not a you know day -day -day operation. operation this is the mm -hmm. rules i have to live by when i'm when i'm working in the city so that would be our preference um to go ahead and, and move that forward if possible. Well, okay. I would like to make a motion if possible to amend the rules that we set earlier Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, to allow for a vote to recommend or not recommend, you know, vote of rec recommendation vote uh, on the Juneteenth holiday. That's my motion today. Do it today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to vote. I'm in favor of Juneteenth, but I'm against adding the holiday uh, Juneteenth as a substitute, not in addition. So that's how I would vote. I guess, I guess no split. So for, for the record, as it goes to the council. Okay, we've got a motion on the table. We will reflect that vote. Okay, we'll reflect it that. We need to vote to change the policy. Yeah. Okay. So I'll second that. Okay. So motion passes no. to suspend the rule that we set earlier. How do you want to that? So now I would make a motion that we recommend, as noted here with the one Scribner issue, you know, one word issue, that we recommend staff. Go through staff. We say we recommend to the city council. Mm -hmm. Approval of this or mm -hmm. whatever that word yep, is. Yes, that's absolutely so that, how we'll word it. Okay. Yep. So that's the motion now on the table. Okay. Please. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Yes, dash no. So, well, I just like no. calling for it. All in favor say aye. Yes. Aye, aye. All no. opposed no. say nay. Nay. Yeah. Two to three. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Two to one. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And I and I will note that you are in favor yeah. of in the favor team, of but not team. for the financial reason of not yeah. adding yeah. Right. No, a holiday it. during the middle of a fiscal year that was unbudgeted uh, expense. Got it. You know. And that's yeah, fair enough. Okay. We have any new business? We're over, over our and I actually have a meeting, so yeah, yeah we're over our time. I know. So we will. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank you. Keep going. I'm like, let's just make it. Thank you. All. Thank you. Great. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Y